Brothers of Squeam. A locked door is a very, very scary thing indeed. Don't you agree, Spindleshanks? <coughs> Why? Open it, Spindleshanks. <laughs> there is a room in a house in a town in a faraway country that no one dares enter. The door has been locked for 75 years, and in that time, no living soul has set foot inside. There is a sign on the door. Beware of the ghost. Every night, as the town clock strikes 12, a spine-chilling scream heralds the start of the haunting. Heavy hobnail boots pace up and down. A wooden chair smashes. An axe chops. And the wailing and chattering whispers madness to listening ears. A spirit cries for help. A door rattles. A key clinks. And a trickle of blood seeps through the ceiling and drips to the floor. Matt and Jody came from New Zealand looking to buy a cheap house. And there was no house cheaper in the whole wide world than the one with the locked door. So they paid their money and moved right in with their baby daughter, Ishbel. And the three of them lived there happily, strangely undisturbed by the noises that came from the locked room. Matt and Jody were both deaf. And Ishbel was too young to understand what terror truly was. <laughs> but as she grew up, Ishbel started to wonder about the ghostly visitor in the room above. And one day, before her parents had woken, <laughs> she went missing. Her parents ran through the house in a frenzy. But Ishbel was nowhere to be found, unless... Matt took the stairs three at a time. Ishbel! Ishbel! Hobnail boots stirred on the other side. A pitiful voice cried, Open the door! But Matt heard nothing. Ishbel! He saw the door handle twist, though, as somebody tried to get out. Ishbel was in the room. Matt had to save her. Ha! The ghost. The ghost was trying to stop him from rescuing his daughter. Dada, said Ishbel. Ishbel find big hole in sky. For the next three years, the piercing cries and wretched moans from the room above turned Ishbel's dreams into nightmares. Yet her fascination with the locked door never dwindled. The more she heard those plaintive cries, Ishbel, Ishbel, come to me. Let me out. The more she wanted to know the ghost, the town clock was striking twelve when she slipped out of bed. She could hear scratching, the sort rats make when they're trapped in a coffin. It was coming down the chimney. Ah! Ishbel rushed to the door and shouted, Help! The ghost is coming to get me! And of course, nobody heard her. Well, nobody living, that is. Help me. It was the ghost who answered her cry. Help me. 
The faraway voice sounded sad and lonely. But that was what the ghost wanted her to think, so that she would let him out. She found herself climbing the stairs towards the locked door. Hello, Ishbel said in a tiny voice. An axe thudded into a block of wood. Hello. A thin white finger touched Ishbel's knee. Ah, ah, ah. It beckoned her forward. Ishbel, open the door. Ishbel. Then the finger disappeared. Ishbel tried to see what was under the door. It was a key. Take the key, Ishbel. Open the door. Release me, Ishbel. The lock had not been opened for 75 years. The handle had not been turned. The room had not been seen by human eyes. It was dark. Something stirred behind her. The ghost! The axe-wielding, blood-curdling, head-chopping ghost was standing behind her! Ah! Am I glad to see you? said the old man. I've been waiting for someone to open that door for 75 years. When I catch the person who locked me in here, there's going to be hell to pay. Excuse me, said Ishbel. Are you a ghost? Good heavens, no. I certainly hope not. Now, do you think we could find something to eat? I'm absolutely famished. Imagine Matt and Jody's surprise when they discovered that their ghost had been a man all along. Imagine their surprise as well when they heard every word that he said. But Ishbel told us you made the most terrified noises. Wouldn't you? I thought I was never going to be rescued. And the axe? To make firewood. It was cold in there. So where did the blood come from? Oh, yes, well, I didn't say I was very good at using the axe. I kept nicking my finger. <laughs> mm. Delicious. <laughs> How old are you? Asked Ishbel. I'm not sure. About 115, I think. Wow! I've never sat on anyone's lap who was that old before. And she leapt up to sit on the old man's lap. But the old man wasn't there. Wake up now, Spindleshanks. It's all over. Time to go home. This door's locked. Is this your idea of a joke? Oh, dare I open it? I think I will. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.